Hi everyone. Oh my goodness. You guys are doing so great in the Awesome in October challenge. I love reading all the feedback on the videos and in the Facebook group. Oh my gosh. It's making me so happy that you're so committed and that you're just working together on figuring out how to do modifications if you need to, or telling me about your modifications and equipment that makes it so helpful for this video right here <laughs> because I want to know how I can help you with any modifications throughout the week and how to help you progress from week to week. So let's start with our upper body. No, 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 no. It's hamstring focus first, right? The first, the Monday workout is your hamstring. There we go. I was on the wrong page. The hamstring focus workout. So deadlifts, doing great. I hope we're all doing great. I do give some um, form cues during that video. So I hope you're listening. And really the most important thing you can do is shoot your hips back and keep your knees soft and really work on keeping your spine straight. One thing I tell clients all the time when you're thinking about keeping your spine straight is to bite your shirt while doing it. It helps not drop or reach just keep it exactly right so you can bite your shirt <laughs> it's weird but it works um another thing reverse split squat okay so i have a split squat modification that i'm going to share with you in a minute um high step ups if you don't have anything high to step up on you don't need something high. It could be a step stool. It could be a curb. It could be a book. It could be something so simple as marching. If you want to do just this move, what I would recommend is going down and then lift up and then down and then lift up because then you're actually engaging that hamstring, which is what we're looking for. So do a little bend and then drive up with the knee. Little bend, drive up with the knee. That's gonna help make it hamstring focused. Um, the next move is hip thrust. Make sure you're lifting heavy. You guys, our hip thrusts are so strong. So make sure you're loading up that weight in a backpack you can use or just double your weight um, on your hips. Don't be afraid to go heavy on those hip thrusts. Uh, the lying leg curl, ouch, doozy. Those are hard. <laughs> and the sumo squat. The sumo squat does not have to be high up on chairs. I did it so that I could drop the weight in between, which makes you go deeper and it makes it harder. But if you um, only want to do it standing on the ground, that is a okay. If you can't even hold weight, hold a sumo squat stance, pulse that out. Oh my gosh, there's so much you can do to make that move effective without standing on chairs. So don't feel bad if you're not standing on chairs. You can do this without chairs. Zigzag walks. One thing that I need to note about that one is yes, bands do roll but they roll the most when they're not heavy enough so stay low and then don't do a huge reach because that also causes the roll don't wear slippery pants <laughs> use a heavy enough band so that it doesn't roll and stay low stay low and don't step too big Okay, for the any of the split squats, what you can do, take a chair, sit on the chair, hit your 90, 90, but then you have a safety net in the chair. So it's about going up and coming down slow and sitting on that chair. But then you have that comfort level and not guessing about, oh my gosh, my knees have to take on all of that pressure at that angle that's not happening. So you're still working on building the legs, except the scariness of the knees has been removed. It's not cheating. It doesn't make it a lesser move. You're just protecting your knees and that's okay. Another one, 
sumo squats. They do not need to be up on a chair. I know, that was like, whoo. But that allowed me to get deeper in the squat because I was able to drop the weight between chairs. You can hold, push your knees out and just pulse out a sumo squat to make it harder. That one will be a okay. Okay, so for lower body focus, the quads, I know that one's a hard one. Heels elevated. Lock those heels in a dumbbell. I showed you how to do that on the video. Um, front foot elevated. It doesn't have to be high, like super high chair. It can be a step stool. It can be a book. It does not have to be high. The whole point is getting your knee to go over the toe, which people have been told forever not to do that, which has been a detriment to our quad strengthening. Because if you go into this position, you'll feel exactly the connection point of your quad to your knee. And sometimes it's like, that's where it hurts right there. Well, that's because we haven't been strengthening it in its lengthened position. So there's a lot of lengthened position um, work in this workout. So if you wanna put it up a little bit higher to take out the pressure, you can just lean forward and push off and lean forward and push off. This one's all about experimenting. If you get forward, hook around. Where is it tight? Where is it tight? Where do you feel it? That's where your the learning is going to come in. If you um, also, it's good to feel your foot. So, it, are you twisting anything outward? Are you twisting inward? Really work on getting the knee directly over the toe. That's how you're going to find. Like if you're a pronator, or what if you roll in, or if you roll out, this is a good point to correct that. Um, okay. The kneeling and leaning back. If that is way too much on your knees, um, use lots of cushioning, first of all. I had to roll either a towel or a blanket. You do not have to go back super far to make that work at all. So this is working the quad in a shortened, contracted positioning, but so not the same as the lengthened, but it's a good exercise if the kneeling isn't working for you. It's just putting a band around both ankles and kicking and straightening the leg. And then you can always bump up the band. Side lunge. Make sure your toes are both facing forward. That's a big one. And then don't reach way, 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 way out. Just a little bit and push those hips back. That's what I can say about that move that a lot of people tend to not do correctly is their toe turns open, which makes your knee wobble. So if your knee is wobble wobbling, it's because your toe isn't forward and you're not locking in by pushing your hips back. Uh, and we don't have Squat walkout, so those are pretty self-explanatory. Next workout, oh, that cardio one. So for the, for the cardio one, for the next time you do it, you can follow along with the video again. I hope you enjoyed my kids. You can follow along with the video, or you can get a deck of cards and pull your own cards. I wrote, I wrote all of the moves down for you, so you'll be able to do them exactly on your own with your favorite music. Um, or you can take that day as a rest day. I'm up for either one of those options. Um, and then the upper body stuff. <sighs> I didn't get any modifications or anybody who was super concerned about um, pain or anything on this one. So I think we're good. Everybody knows how to do these moves. One thing that I do need to note on your bicep curl Pinch those elbows in. Make sure you're pinching them in on your regular curl and your W curl as well. So don't let that fly on the W. Still keep it squeezed in tight. Um, upright row. The wings, full crushers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the light. Ooh, 
I just did light on Friday, like you guys. If you don't use weight on this one, that's a-okay. I did it without weight because of my shoulder that added weight on the, like when it's so far away from your body was too much. And I still feel it. I still feel it without weight. So even without weight at all, this one is still a great move. Um, make sure you're feeling, don't be afraid to feel yourself on the pull downs, on the tricep, on the pulls this way. Make sure that you are engaging the right muscles. Let me just disrobe for you. So if you're not feeling on the rows, if you're not feeling it here, right here, this muscle, on your row, on your row, or the lat pull down, then we're, we're not doing it right. So make sure you're feeling however you can, this way, this way, while you're in the work, while you're pulling things, go, okay, yeah, I know what she's talking about. Um, especially in this one, I mean, you'll know. You'll feel it on the back of your arms, which is your tricep, and it should be right down the side here. So if you need to drop one arm and just practice pulling, I mean like, oh, it's right there, okay. I think that's super, super beneficial to your workouts. Bench over, well, kneeling on the lat, lat, da, da, da. Lat raises are pretty. Yeah, and then this one, oh man, shoulder. Shoulder, shoulder. Take it slow and feel that. When we, when things get hard, we tend to want to go fast to get it over with. And then you're like losing all the work, all the beneficial stuff from that move. So still, even when you want to go fast, keep it slow. All right. You guys are doing so great in this challenge. Next week, I'm going to tell you not only form or modifications if you need it, but also how we're gonna progress it since we're two weeks. So since you've done the workouts twice and maybe you're like, well, maybe I could do a little bit more. I'm gonna tell you how you can make it a little bit harder, a little bit more extra and progress it so that it feels continuously challenging. All right, have a great week. Continue to post your stuff. Continue to tell me any questions that you have. Continue to, um, you know, pop in the Facebook group that you've done it because I love seeing that we're completing our workouts. Have a great week. Can't wait to see you some more. Bye.